Hi, welcome to another how-to video. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Onshape integration with OpenBOM. So let's get started. Let's see what you can do uh, integrating Onshape with OpenBOM. So first you can see, you can do and see much more beyond the Onshape build of material. So with uh, the OpenBOM open integration with Onshape, you can really visualize your data uh, and extract product information like rivets, uh, see it in multiple views. Uh, you can fully understand dependencies and where used. Uh, and in this case, we are talking a significant large assembly. So this has hundreds of lines and many, many levels. So uh, you can uh, very quickly and see uh, your data. You can visualize where you used, uh, for example, see the top level and visualize the structure with visualizations. So you can navigate easily through uh, the on-shape data, understanding dependencies and understanding assemblies and sub-assemblies very easily. You can also very quickly jump into a, a flattened view and, and roll up all quantities to a single level. In this example, we're going to generate new part numbers for uh, for Onshape. We're going to also extract description from uh, the name of Onshape back to the description, which is empty. So I'm going to show you also how to improve your CAD data. So the first thing you will do will be going to the main integrations page. So you go, you can come directly to integrations and jump into Onshape. So from here, you can uh, directly install the Onshape add-in. Uh, so you can also search for OpenBOM and install the add-in uh, in, in Onshape. That's the first step. So we're going to configure the end. So this is the end result. I'm going to start with uh, a copy of this data where we have a bit of less information. We have no part numbers and we have uh, no descriptions. So uh, the OpenBOM integration can log in to it. So you can log in directly uh, to uh, your account. Uh, and then you can configure uh, which properties you're going to send uh, to OpenBOM. So you can once this uh, reloads, you can see those properties. So you can see you can bring uh, any properties that you want to bring from, from Onshape directly to OpenBOM. So you can define it. Uh, and this will be the first step. You can also go into settings and notice that you can send also derivative files like steps uh, and generate PDFs out of drawings. So it's also be possible. We can play a bit with that. In this case, we can just generate the structure. We'll see a little bit more about this on shape uh, assembly. So notice that there is already part numbers in the part number field uh, with a bit of a strange format, 16 characters. And I can see how many typos you can miss on those zeros there. So if you have like descriptive part numbers or your part numbers are in still in stages where you can change it, they're still in prototyping, developing a brand new product, you can use the open bomb part numbering uh, capabilities to reassign new numbers if either you don't have good part numbers or you want to, to change it for some reason. I'm going to show you how to do that just in a, in a moment. So the first thing uh, is just generating a structure from uh, directly from your CAD model. So notice that we do uh, listen and, and watch all these assembly properties in Onshape. So all the bill of materials options like exclude from bombs is going to be taken in consideration when you generate bill of materials. Also the sub-assembly behavior. So in this case, all these options, uh, show assembly only will be more like a purchase assembly. Show components only is more like dissolving the sub assemblies, like more a phantom assembly that you have in CAD and you just want to bring the, the child items one level up. So this is similar to the promote setting in SOLIDWORKS if you have used other CAD systems. Uh, very, very intuitive in on shape. Um, it just does exactly what it says. So um, we also can listen into the category of the items. So on shape also have categorization. And we can use these categories to specify different catalogs in OpenBOM if you if you want to. So in this case, we're going to just use the defaults and we're going to generate the structure uh, with extracting this information category, configuration, description, material, and revision, and using this uh, more legacy part number with uh, you know long characters. And we're going to then see how to change it. Let's create this build material. This is going to take a couple of minutes. This is a uh, quite a large assembly, more than 100 items. Uh, so it's going to take a while, uh, and let's wait for that to finish. So it has finished uh, right now, so we can navigate uh, this uh, multi-level structure. So you can understand all the different levels. Uh, now, if you want to reassign new part numbers, uh, recommend that we uh, first you know, delete the existing information and then uh, use the function to set up part numbers in OpenBOM. So if you go into the other panel, OpenBOM items, uh, this panel has the ability to generate part numbers to all components. So you can see there's a generate part numbers command there. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, first, uh, let's delete the existing information. So I recommend that you go to all bill of materials and delete the existing bombs created. So you can shift delete and send those to trash. So 
So that will be the first step. The next uh, would be assigning new part numbers. So notice that I have a catalog, my items that already has part numbers set up. So if we go into my items, there is a part number set up already to starting with one and a counter of a few digits. Okay, so six digit counter, you would not go wrong with that. So we can now just start and, and re-update and populate new part numbers to all uh, these structures. So you can select the catalog, save settings. I'm gonna recursive to all uh, sub-levels, to all children, and also gonna say override existing part numbers. So this is an example where you either have descriptive part numbers or you, you know, your part numbering mechanism are still in prototype stages and you wanna assign a new uh, numbering schema. So we're gonna process this and generate part numbers for the entire structure. It's gonna take a couple of seconds. So the part generation is finished. So we can now uh, generate the full bill of material again. And you have all the updated part numbers and updated BOM structures. So let's do that. Just let's create the bill material again and see the result. So let's create bill material and then it will take a couple of uh, couple of moments to complete. And then let's see the result. Now that the bill material has completed, we can see the multi-levels being generated. So as you can see, it's quite a complex uh, one. So uh, notice that the description in this model is empty. So we can use OpenBOM to populate this from the name of the model. So let's do this. Uh, let's open this uh, on a full web browser. And uh, we can copy um, information just from, for example, using copy paste, even multi-level. You can just copy and paste into the description. Now, if you have multi, a lot of levels to go through, uh, you can also do this uh, on the catalog. So if you jump into each item info, notice that the catalog is seen there in my items, you have a shortcut to open it just, just from there. And here will be a lot easier just to update uh, and do this task uh, directly from here. So you can uh, maybe just arrange a bit the window so we have a bit more space. And uh, we can do this uh, description update uh, directly from, from here. Let's do that. Let's go to the top where it is. All this, this is one that I updated from build material. So I'm just going to go from uh, this one to the bottom. You can just shift, shift, just shift any or of your favorite shortcuts or keyboard shortcuts. I will control C here. And then I'm going to paste this on, on directly on the catalog in the first item. So I'm going to paste there. And this is going to populate all that uh, information. Uh, let me just let me just copy more back here. So let's see here. Do anything from here? Let's see here. There we go. So everything is updated. Okay. So. All right, so I have that just using copy paste from uh, one column name back to description. Notice that the build material would update if you if you refresh this information. Notice how this is now updated from the catalog in multi levels. So all that information is uh, is updated, and uh, you can bring this back to Onshape. So you can go back to your model. Notice that now Onshape is also you can see the uh, the panel of OpenBOM. See the web base, so real it's real time. It will update automatically. But to update this back to on shape, you can use the send properties to on shape command. So this will uh, update the on shape data, um, in this case, description back to on shape. This is going to take a couple of seconds and it should be completed in a few moments. See the property update is completed. You can click OK. And uh, you can check on uh, on shape document, just opening its uh, properties. And you can see the results of, of it just opening any sort of a on shape document, you can see that the description is being populated, and we also have obviously the part number from the previous command. It's a very simple way just to you know, update and, and enhance your CAD data using OpenBOM. So next, we're going to talk about rivets and uh, inserting build materials on drawings. I'm generating derivative files. You can go into settings and enable in settings. Uh, you can enable the derivatives that you're going to use. Uh, in this case, I'm going to select just generate steps for parts. Uh, for assemblies, they could generate large models to evaluate if you really need the steps for assemblies. Is it for manufacturing? Uh, selecting parts are more common. STLs for 3D printing. Uh, notice that the generate PDFs is disabled. Uh, you can also generate for sheet metal components. 
So uh, it's disabled because it, this option is only available when you have versions in your models. So let's create a version uh, and also uh, look how we can enable the PDF out of the drawing. So let's move into a smaller sub assembly here and let's create a version in on shape. So that will be the first step, creating a, a version and that will uh, enable to um, that option to be enabled. So let's create a version of uh, this model. Uh, this also has a drawing that we can open, and then you have that feature uh, to generate PDFs enabled. It's creating a version. So let's wait that to complete. And there we go, we have uh, version one. And when we have, we can open also the drawing. The drawing is open. Uh, from here, we can insert uh, the bomb table uh, from open bomb. So we need to switch to back to main so we can make changes. Uh, and here we're going to insert uh, the build material to the drawing. So how to do that? First step is uh, select the open bomb panel and create uh, that object. So we click on insert bomb table, select the type of build material. In this case, we're going to select the multi-level build material and click on prepare bomb data for this uh, drawing file. So this will be the first step. So uh, this will be inserted. So notice they have further instructions. So it's ready to be inserted into the drawing. So you go into uh, the normal on shape functionality to bring uh, this to on shape. So you go into insert build material, insert bomb table. Uh, on this option, uh, you can click on insert. And from the options to insert, you will select bomb data and uh, select the created uh, Bomb data from from open bomb so it's, it's very useful if you have uh, instead of non-model items outside your shape you have full complete digital build materials uh, it gives you further flexibility i do notice that inserted build materials on drawings uh, can leave to more work to keep them updated uh, and don'ts is uh, you never put the revision column on uh, on your bombs on on drawings it gives you more work to keep them updated if uh, if you do follow part interchangeabilities that that revision uh, column should be irrelevant there so um, the next step would be just uh, regenerate. So we will create a new uh, version out of uh, out of this. Um, so let's create a new version. So that is uh, this new insertion is uh, up to date. So let's do that. Create a version two of the drawing. So we have this latest up to date um, drawing with our table. And uh, next we can just uh, update the build material to generate the reverts back again. So let's do that. Let's go back into the back into the model, uh, we can go into version two and then regenerate, update the build material with the derivatives and PDFs uh, selected. So let's, let's just do that. So we have our complete data. So let's update the build material and this will generate the derivatives. There we go, it says uh, finish. So let's open this on a full web browser and see the result of the derivatives. So uh, we can you can see we have the step files uh, over there. There we go. And the PDF of the subassembly, uh, it's on the item info. You can just find that over there. And there we go. We have our updated drawing. So I hope you like this uh, video uh, about uh, how to uh, integration with uh, OpenMom with OnShape. Thank you and see you next time.